So, the fourth biggest fear of any computer enthusiast has finally happened to me. I have ran out of storage with all the YouTube videos and pictures of products and things that I have to save. I have been filling up my single 2TB hard drive rather quickly. So, to solve that problem, I am going to be building a NAS today because we don't do nothing no half measure. Yeah. So for those of you who are not initiated into the computer cult that we all subscribe to, a NAS is network attached storage, basically a big hard drive slash computer that connects to your network and then allows you to access it through your phone, laptop, computers, things of that nature. So currently the NAS that I'm building today is purely just going to be serving as a storage pool and nothing too interesting. There's a lot of different things you can do with the NAS, such as setting up Minecraft servers or Plex servers or automatic backups or other plethora of cool things that you can do with them since I'll have one built by the end of this video I'm sure I'm gonna have more ideas and videos on this messing with the little cool things you can do But right now we're just using it as a big storage pool Which is the most basic task that a NAS can give you so for today the NAS that I'm building is going to be filled with a RAID Z Configuration with three two terabyte hard drives. I know that RAID Z might not mean anything to you if you don't know raids and computers and things like that. So if you set up a RAID array, what your computer is going to see is basically a giant hard drive. It's going to take these three hard drives and make your computer basically see it as one. But there's more going on under the hood than that. If you write a file to that big hard drive, it's going to take that file and then stripe them over these three hard drives. And then in the case that one of the hard drives fails, such as this one, you can plug in another hard drive and let the other two rebuild that missing data. And therefore, any of these hard drives could fail at some point in the future, be replaced, and then I can restore all my data to where it was. That's probably the biggest benefit with a NAS, and that's probably what most people use them for, is having a safe place to store family photos and videos and things like that. Really, I'm kind of going a little bit overkill with just storing my old YouTube videos on here in case I need to come back and reference them, but I do have bigger plans for things to do with it down the road, so it's kind of a test NAS at first, which will then be upgraded into an actual server where I might have my Steam game streamed from them, I might have system images put on them. There's a lot of different things that I could use it for with my PC flipping business. So with the NAS kind of roughly explained, I could go into more depth, but there are better YouTube channels and people to describe it because this is kind of my first foray into the NAS space. And there's a lot of enthusiasts out there that know a hell of a lot more about it than I do. So I could make a dedicated video on kind of describing it but I feel like I might be less than qualified to do so. But we'll go over the specs that I'm putting in there today real quick, then we'll go ahead and build the machine, and then we will show you the final product and how I potentially use it and all that fun stuff. So for the NAS, we are using True NAS. That's the program or the operating system that is going to speak to all the hardware and tell it what to do. It also has a nice GUI, which basically is an online website that you can go to on a separate computer and control things from. That way you don't need a dedicated monitor for your server at all times. But to use TrueNAS, you need a small flash storage drive. It could actually be a thumbstick, but they recommend a dedicated SSD since it has a much better long-term survivability than a thumb drive. Then you need actual storage for your storage in your NAS, such as these hard drives. Obviously, you need a motherboard, CPU, and RAM that all work. You also need some sort of video output because in the initial setup, when you're installing TrueNAS, you need to actually see a monitor and set it all up. So we're using an Intel chip that has integrated graphics. You obviously need a power supply. Ones that are higher certified, like a gold or a platinum, would be better since you'd be getting a much better wattage efficiency and you wouldn't be paying so much because a NAS is being ran most of the time or all the time in some cases, but we're using a pretty generic 80 plus white certificate one just because it's cheaper and I'm cheap is what I had laying around. So as far as the CPU, motherboard, and RAM is concerned, we're using an i5-4570, we're using 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, and we're using an MSI ITX motherboard. It's all gonna go into this Fractal Design Core 500, I think is what it's called, um, which will hold the three hard drives, the motherboard, the power supply, and the SSD for us. You also need a little thumb drive to make the installer software for TrueNAS, so we also have that going on. So we're going to slap all the parts in there. It's not going to look pretty because it's an ITX case and ITX case cable management is rather challenging and I'm probably gonna be in there again at some point 
to mess around with everything, so I'm not going to twist tie everything down. But we're going to get it all built, make sure it's nice and working. We're going to then get it up on the server and we're going to go through the installation process. So after only a few moderate setbacks, one of them including I don't have the mount for the third hard drive and the cord that runs to the power supply through the case being rather finicky, we finally have it all together. As you can see, it looks glorious, but we're going to um, see if it will turn on for us before we clean it up a little bit and seal it up. It boots up. How exhilarating. So I'm going to take a few moments off camera to clean this up, get it all packed, sealed, and then we'll move on to the next step. So we got it all put together. None of the wires in the fans. That was a challenge. Um, all the stuff's put in. Everything's connected. Supposedly, everything should be ready. We're going to go ahead and, if I can find this, plug in our boot device for TrueNAS or FreeNAS. Right now, they're swapping over from FreeNAS to TrueNAS, but they're the same thing, basically. We're plugging that in and then installing TrueNAS on that small 32 gigabyte SSD in the front. And then after that, we'll be getting into the actual online GUI and then setting up storage and all that fun stuff. So this goes in and we turn the computer on. So right now we're in the motherboard BIOS and we're going to set up to make sure that it boots from that USB. I already have FreeNAS installed on that SSD, so it's probably gonna try and run from that. We gotta make sure that it's running off of the SanDisk USB or the USB hard disk. One of those two should have the boot thing. Once you have it set to boot off of the USB stick, then we simply just restart the system with, nope, we got to save the settings. There we go, save and exit. Okay, so now it should boot off that USB and then it's gonna bring us into the installation prompt for TrueNAS and then once we get through that, it will start installing TrueNAS on the SSD and then we'll get into the next steps. Okay, so the TrueNAS thing pops up, it will auto boot, but you can go ahead and hit one for the boot in the installer, and it will start that. And then it looks like you're hacking into the mainframe from an old 90s film for about a couple minutes, a couple seconds, depending on what you're using. And then you're going to get to this part where it's going to ask if you want to repair your system, install, upgrade, all that kind of stuff. You can also reboot and shut down your system from here. Obviously, we're installing slash upgrading, so we hit one and hit OK. And then it's going to give you all of these storage devices that it sees. Right now it's showing that small 32 gigabyte ADA SSD as ADA0. And then ADA1 through 3 are those two terabyte hard drives that we have in the actual computer. So if you go ahead and hit space on that first SSD, that would select that as where we're going to make the OS operating system for TrueNAS. And then we go ahead and hit OK. So now it's asking for the root password. And that is the password that you're going to use to connect to the web GUI, which then connects to the NAS and then it lets you change settings and all that stuff. This is not the password that you use to actually connect and put files on the thing. So keep it something simple. I'm not gonna tell you my password obviously, but I'm gonna go ahead and type that in. And then it's gonna go ahead and install TrueNAS onto the SSD, which again, it's going to put up a bunch of prompts, so. All right, so now TrueNAS is installed, so we're gonna just go ahead and let the system reboot. Um, you might have to change the 
boot order or you can just take the installation media out but either way you want to make sure that you're booting off of that ssd so we get into a similar prompt that you would see when you're doing the installation media it basically just brings up the little splash screen for true nas and then automatically after eight seconds it will actually boot into free nas or true nas whatever it's called and then start setting up your server for you and then once all this is done it should shoot out a little ip address which is the ip address that you'll use to connect to the server from your computer your phone or laptop so now it finally shot out the ip address for me it will be a little bit different for everyone obviously you'll generally see an ip address that starts with 192 also it might change depending on what port you're using on your router you can set a static ip for your nas which might be useful uh, that's a little bit more than what i want to get into right now but now we're going to go over to my actual computer, not the NAS, and we're gonna start accessing it through the web GUI and start changing up some settings and setting up the storage and all that fun, fun stuff. So, so now the NAS is all set up. It is connected to the server with all the data sets and permissions and all that fun stuff set up. So now I can use it as a glorified hard drive that takes up way too much power, which is precisely what we were aiming for. If you want a little deep dive guide on how to set all that up. I could do that, but there probably are better people out there with better videos on the topic. But, you know, with my lovely voice and my charming demeanor, you may just want me to do it. But anyway, it is now all set up. There are a bunch of cool ideas I have for it. One of the nice things is I could run like a local Minecraft server off of it for my friends and I. I could set it up so that if I ever had an employee that worked in the office with me, he could connect to the server as well. And that way we wouldn't have to be working on transferring files. I'm also at some point probably going to put a 2.5 ethernet card in here um, because right now it's running off of a 1G connection, which is also going to a 1G connection on my router. So I'm thinking at one point, I'll probably make both those connections 2.5 since my computer has a built-in 2.5 and that way I can have much faster local transfer speeds. And then potentially I was curious with a 2.5G connection, if I could store my Steam library on here and then pull from that to test all the rigs that I make. Because right now I have a dedicated SSD where I have everything preloaded and I plug that into the computer and I test everything. But if I could pull the game straight from the server and not have to have a dedicated SSD for it, that'd be kind of cool. There are issues you'd run into though because if the transfer speed is too slow, you're gonna see that impact the performance of the game. I'll probably make a video on it because I'm rather curious whether or not that's doable or not, but you definitely can't do it on a 1G connection, but on a 2.5, it's plausible. Anyway, that kind of wraps up this video. It was kind of a short, fun video that wasn't super scripted or anything. I just wanted to build a server. It's been in the back of my mind for a while, and I kind of need it as a tool anyway. And I thought that since it's a computer oriented channel, you guys might enjoy seeing the process of setting it up. Again, if you want more details on it or more videos on it, I'm sure they will be coming in the near future. But uh, for now, this is just a simple, let's build it and make it work and introduce it to the channel. With that said, if you learned anything, hit that like button. If you think that this NAS is an absolute disgrace and a waste of technology, hit that dislike button. If you wanna see more of my NAS PC flipping adventures, questions, tests, etc., hit that subscribe button. I will try my best to keep you around. Without further ado, have a good day, guys.